Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it's February 2nd of 2023. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we're still in the uh, snowy, icy situation down here. It's not, I think I made the previous video, I talked about that. Uh, it's, but for here, uh, it's a problem. I mean, they're talking like it's uh, a disaster, a major disaster. Yeah, there's some snow and some ice out there. And these people down here are not, you know, used to it. Although I'm sure there's tons of people living down here who, who came from, you know, northern parts of the United States. But, you know, the general population is uh, just not prepared for a little bit of ice and a little bit of snow. Uh, Texas Governor Abbott, who was a real prick in every way, uh, <clears throat> uh, he talked for four hours apparently on television here in Texas explaining everything that he had done, you know, called out the National Guard and you know, everything that he had done. and. How the power grid was, uh, you know, working, and just he talked for like four hours, was surrounded by his, you know, people in the background, you know, police, probably a, you know, Texas National Guard. I mean, you know, it's all show for him, because of course he did so bad. Well, he does bad in every regard, but, uh, so. Uh, I, um, as I mentioned in a previous video, and probably went on and on and on, I dealt with, you know, blizzards, you know, I drove through blizzards from where I lived into downtown Kansas City, and then when I got there, hospital security, you know, we had taken over against my, you know, uh, the director of security had called the supervisors together, you know. And it, he didn't start with me, you know, he started with, you know, all the, the other three supervisors were like, you know, and I wasn't. So he calls on, you know, oh, well, we can, I figured out a way we can get a brand new Jeep and blah, 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 you know, and it'd be just wonderful, just great, you know, and that kind of stuff. and. And the only thing was, if we just if we just take over snow removal here, it'll save the hospital money, and then we'll have the jeep. And uh, so he asked, you know, the lieutenant, you know, great idea, Mr. Ross, great idea. And then he asked the uh, uh, day shift supervisor, great idea, great idea. And then he asked the second shift supervisor, great idea, great idea. And, then he asked the midnight, who was a grumpy guy, he'd been there for quite a while, who, Lloyd Akins, uh, who was just, you know, he was in charge of the midnight shift, and he liked being in charge of the midnight shift. He didn't have to put up with the administration and all that type of stuff. Um, oh, I forgot. One of those people that I said, you know, anyway. So Lloyd Akins, oh, great idea, Mr. Ross, wonderful. Then Mr. Ross comes to me. You know, he had prepared his thing. And uh, and then I told him, man, I don't think it's a good idea. You know, we can't do two things, you know, well. We're doing one thing well, security and safety, but we can't do, you know. And then Mr. Ross just moved, and then he went back again, said a little bit, the same thing he said before, and then he went through, and they all said it came to me. So then, of course, the director of security, you know, okay, keep this a secret, you know. And, of course, I immediately told the uh, security officers on, the, oh, I see, I see, I was in charge of day shift, I think. No, second shift at that point. I told them, I said, now, you know, don't broadcast this, but, uh, and I told them. So months later, when uh, Mr. Ross you know, announced that uh, we were going to be doing snow removal, you know, the, the other security shifts, well, you know, you know, 
And then, of course, the shift that I was supervisor of, you know, these guys said, well, we knew it. We knew it two months ago or three months ago, whatever Jim told us, you know. And uh, uh, how did I get on this subject? Oh, the weather. Let me get it. Well, oh, by the way, the director of security, of course, told all the security officers when they, they were then complaining. Well, all of the supervisors were told, and they all agreed it was a great idea. I definitely didn't agree. Uh, and I was proven right the first time it snowed. You know, one thing the director of security said too, well, uh, well, we don't have bad weather here too often. It'll be okay. When it hit, I mean, major blizzard hit. I happened to be working. And boom, it hit. And then there was a guy who had just come in to the emergency room, and while we're out there taking care of the snow, he's left the room that they put him in, and he's going around to the various places picking up the uh, prescription pads and putting them in his pocket, and then also standing in front of the admitting department, writing out his own prescription. <laughs> and, of course, they called. The operator and the operator called, you know, me, and I went in. And they told him, too, to head to the pharmacy. It was late at night, by the way, too. Pharmacy, I think, would just be closing up. And as I headed, the pharmacist, you know, said, he went that way. Well, then also door 10 alarm went off, which was right there, right down from, you know, it was an exit used right by, you know, administration. Not many people have used that exit. It wasn't a fire exit. I mean, it wasn't, you know, an alarm didn't go off or anything, but... I take it back out. Yeah, when the alarms kicked on at 9 p.m., it would have gone off. But anyway, the alarm went off, and I went out, and it was, okay, picture blizzard. <laughs> Not what they down here are having. And uh, so then he's, there's a sidewalk on that, you know, and then you are in the street. You know, you've left the hospital property, you exit that door, sidewalk, you're not on property, hospital property. And I hollered to him, you know, <laughs> as best as it could have, just like a, you know, blizzard. And I said, sir, can I help you? No, I'm okay. And I said, are you sure? I, I don't need any help. I said, did you want a prescription? Because he was writing it, you know, they told me he was. I said, did you want to get a prescription filled? And he said, yeah, I do. I said, I can help you. Just step over here on hospital property. And then I put him under arrest. Anyway, the next, you know, the next day I told the director of security, see, it, it snowed, first time it snowed, here's what happened, and Mr. Ross said, you guys did excellent, I'm happy, you know. So anyway, I dealt for years with, you know, when I was a reserve officer for seven years or eight years or whatever it was, my night to patrol was Sunday nights. I, that's, I didn't ask for that. That's what they gave me, which worked out good. I had Mondays and Tuesdays off uh, from my real job. And, you know, it'd be a blizzard, and I'd get in my car, you know, Volkswagen, with Volkswagen Rabbit, and it worked, worked out good for the snow. And I'd drive over to the police station. In the beginning, there'd be nobody there, not even a dispatcher. We used the Cass County dispatcher. Um, and then take the car out, and I would go out, and I would patrol, and I would actually patrol and drive through, you know, to make sure nobody, you know, somebody didn't run off the road into a ditch or something, and uh, were stuck or something, and I'd, I'd patrol, never got stuck. But, so I mean, down here, I'm sorry, the ex-wife is just, oh, you know, this is terrible, and I, no, it's not terrible. But I'm going to be 81 here in March, I mean 82 in March, and I have some problems now, arthritis and other kinds of problems. And uh, anyway, we, I had to order in a birth certificate for my son. It wasn't a friend exactly, somebody came over, which is unusual for anybody to come over, you know, even for, you know, for, even for him. Somebody came over and was here for a very short period of time in his room and stole my son's billfold with his state ID and with his uh, bank card. 
So I uh, ordered in a his birth certificate. I, have, I mentioned this. I have everybody's birth you know, relatives. I mean, and death certificates and all that type of stuff. I couldn't find my sons. I may still, I mean, I've gone through, you wouldn't, well, you did see, I think, some pictures of the bed covered up and that type of stuff with thing. Um, by the way, that's me. My mother was back then in 1953, surgical secretary at Research Medical Center up in surgery. And uh, uh, they later after that, I think all the hospitals went. Of course, maybe some had started out earlier. I think they call them now unit secretaries. So no matter where you go, it'll be. A, I think that I think that's what they're called. But back then, she was called uh, surgical secretary or whatever. Anyway, it says here, uh, drawn by an intern at research from a picture of Jimmy on my desk at the surgery over the weekend. So, and I actually, years later, my mother always was wanting me to look at her pictures, you know, all the pictures and things that she had, and she had a ton, and I, I told her, you know, I'm too busy you know, uh, later, and, and then of course she, eventually died of Alzheimer's and then I when I went through the stuff I had a lot of questions about who you know who is this you know or, and it's even at the point now later on it got to the point I, I knew that they were like my father's brothers or sister well the sisters I knew I could you know but the uh, the brothers and I forgot which one. I remember Vince. He was in the Marine Corps and he was in the Pacific during World War II. And he came home when he when he w had to go in. He was selected by the New York Yankees to uh, be on their farm team, the Kansas City Blues in Kansas City, Missouri. And for people outside, well, it probably works the same. You know, same maybe in other countries for other for soccer or whatever. I don't know. But by him going to the Kansas City Blues, a, the Kansas City Yankees, uh, they had a number of all the, you know, Yankees, Chicago, and all that. They all had farm teams, and they played baseball, played against each other. The farm teams played against each other, and uh, if then you, you know, turned out to be a good player, then you would be picked and moved to whatever team, you know, like New York Yankees from Kansas City, you know, to the New York Yankees. So who knows, you know, how my uncle Vince would have done. He was a good, you know, baseball player and been picked, but he hadn't actually gone, you know, the war interrupted. So, but some of my uncles, I really, you know, well, anyway, I, I should have, uh, I should have, sat down and let my mother show me all of the uh, pictures and tell me things. Because now I have questions, you know, there's one when she was very, well, I have pictures of, you know, her when she was a baby, you know. I didn't take the pictures, by the way, in case you're wondering. But, uh, yeah, I have questions as to who, you know, who is that, you know. I'm going to go through, I'm going to figure out something, maybe at the end of these videos, if anybody stays to the end of a video, maybe I will uh, show a picture or two that are, you know, tied together some way. <clears throat> this is April 1980. Uh, that's me. And, oops. Let's see, that is... You know, now I can't remember. I think that's my uh, <coughs> reserve officer uniform. I can't remember. Any... Oh, uh, yeah, I, I think it is. Also, by the way, if you can see, the only time in my life I had a... Uh, uh, oops. 
anyway, I'm going to scan, you know, scan these pictures. <clears throat> but I had a mustache, and I had the mustache during the time that I, uh, I didn't have to go through the uh, police academy because I was grandfathered in when the new law came into effect or whatever. I didn't have to go, but uh, the <clears throat> police department, you know, said, do you want to go? And I said, sure. So I went three nights a week for I forget how long. Here's uh, December 9th of the 50s. That's me. See the telephone? Have you ever seen a telephone like that? With a rotary dial? On the, uh, let's see. Nope, it's the other one. Okay. That right there, that's a picture of me. And then over there is a picture of my grandmother, my mother's mother. And that, by the way, uh, was one of the death photos or whatever back in ye olden days. Uh, they... Uh, Oh, by the way, they're also, that's interesting. Um, they would take a picture of dead people. I mean, even babies or whatever, went like in the frontier times or, you know, way, way back when photography first came around, you know, a guy on a, a cart with a horse pulling it or whatever would go through, you know, the Midwest and various areas and pull up to somebody's farmhouse, you know, there might not be any farmhouse for a long ways away, he'd pull up and say, would you like your pictures taken? And a lot of those people would, you know, they bring their furniture out to show, you know, so when the picture was taken, that family would be in front of the, the house. And um, a lot of times their furniture would be brought up because they wanted people to see, hey, we have, you know, and uh, also there was, you know, if the, I guess if the guy showed up to take pictures, if you had a family member who had just died, you would take, you know, have, or a baby or a child, and you would uh, take that. Uh, and so that's a picture of my mother's mother from the coffin. Um, so 1950, that must have been very close to when she, because probably some other pictures when my grandmother died, uh, because my mother, you know, as relatives died. Uh, my father died when my, you know, and even other people, you know, when they died, you know, uh, I'd go to the funeral because well because I had to because I was a kid I'd go to the funeral. But we never went back to the grave. We never went back on Memorial Day. Once a year, you know, families go to, you know, the cemetery. I've never been to my father. You know, he was buried. You know, I've never been there. But my, uh, a couple of days later, my uh, mother went there with me. I'm not sure if my father went. And uh, I think she, you know, she wanted me looking sadly at the... Uh, you know, the grave, and then uh, I'm sure this was, and I, I'm sure I knew this, you know. Oh, let me get a picture of you looking at uh, mom. My mother would have called her, mom. I called my mother Betty, I called my father Jim, but I called, you know, uh, Betty, my mother, I called her mother, I called her mom. So... Uh, I think that's it. I just have, to, well, on the other side of, oh man, I want to, I'm going to try to scan them and try to work them in. You know, maybe there'll be this video and then it won't, it won't be the end, but you guys will stop watching it. But there's going to be, I'll try to put these pictures together in some type of an order, maybe start chronologically, you know, what they really owe. And there's, uh, a farmhouse like I you know told you about uh, and it looks like uh, uh, what was that movie where the people run into the uh, the banjo song anyway my mother's family 
and they've got the guys are out there with their their rifles, you know, like the McCoys and the Hatfields or whatever people that uh, families that killed each other for years. And uh, anyway, they're out there, and you know, my mother is you know small, and her brother is you know small, and the rest of the grandmas are out there, and uh, the whole thing. There's that picture. It's getting starting to lose some of its, you know, so I want to put those out there and try to group them together in some type, some, you know, tell a little bit of the story that I know, or, you know, around, uh, around that. Anyway, back to the weather. Uh, okay, my son's uh, bank card was stolen and his state ID. Um, uh, we, um, so I don't get around well now, like I, okay, I'm not a, I'm not a wimp. I mean, I worked in blizzards, you know, eight or 12 hours outside in the blizzards, you know. I drive through a blizzard from home, get to the hospital and have to, you know, and then go home, you know, drive through the blizzard or what was left of it going home. But now I'm not able to really, you know, I'm not, I've got arthritis and all kinds of problems and poor circulate, really poor circulation in my legs. And uh, can't get the shoes to fit me. I'm wearing some, I don't even, I don't even know how. Uh, which make it, those things are, that are on my feet that are supposed to be like shoes but are for people that have some type of foot problem. Forget what it is, but it, it makes it extremely hard to walk and uh, easy to fall. So, uh, we have run out of Coca-Cola. I ran out last night. I sh could show you a refrigerator, just take my word for it, it's empty. Uh, well, there's a little bit of left of, uh, there's a thing of orange juice in there and a little bit left, that's it. Of course, that's the refrigerator for my room, that small one, you know. But there's no Coke or any kind of soft drinks. You know, and the, we're out. Uh, okay, we're supposed to have the birth certificate sent from Jefferson City. I paid extra money for it to be on flight, to be, uh, you know, hand delivered and signed, you know, I paid all this to get it. Uh, storm delayed. Uh, we've had for years an ice making machine, you know, that you plug in in the kitchen, not an ice. When I was in Florida there with my grown daughter and my grandson, they had a refrigerator there that we rented, that we were renting, the place we rented, that had an ice maker was built into the door of the refrigerator. That was nice. But what we've had here for years is, you know, one that I have to, you have to pour water in occasionally, and it makes ice, and it makes it, you know, makes it fast. And we all love ice, and uh, in our drinks and what have you. Uh, it broke. <clears throat> back a few days ago, just before the storm hit, and I ordered one um, for $89 or whatever, and it was supposed to be delivered a couple of days ago because of the storm. It hasn't come. Um, so we have no Coke, no soft drinks of any kind. Uh, our refrigerator normally is you know, it's like Fibber McGee's closet. None of you whippersnappers will remember Fibber McGee's closet, but uh, the ex-wife keeps that freezer filled with, you know, mostly stuff she likes, to be honest. But I'm an ex-husband, you know how that goes. <clears throat> she makes I'm supply. She keeps me, make sure that I'm uh, supplied with Coke so I don't go ballistic or something, I guess. <clears throat> but, uh, so no Coke. Uh, no soft drinks, uh, very little food in the freezer, uh, very little food. 
everything around here. She needs a, you know, she had EMS come out, but they did <clears throat> take her to the hospital <clears throat> for a problem she's got. <clears throat> they did some checks here and then <clears throat> telecommunicated. Okay, my voice is going <clears throat> with the uh, doc with a doctor, and <clears> they <throat> did everything. And then they, uh, the guys who came out, they didn't have the one pill that she could take. And uh, of course, the prescription was called in, and the pharmacy has been closed. First, the you know the well, the store was closed. Well, first the uh, pharmacy was closed, and the store was closed. Her other way around, I forget. Anyway, so she needs her prescription. Uh, I need my coke. Um, So, I need a sign to put up, help, help. Uh, you know, need to, need to get out and do a few things. The apartment complex here, by the way, they're really nice. They keep raising their every time. And they raise the uh, amount up that it costs them yearly. But the people are real nice. <clears throat> the couple maintenance guys that work now, they've gone through some maintenance guys, but they're always, well, except for one. They've always been really nice. And the uh, one lady, the manager or whatever, she's, she's been the manager here for years. She's really nice. And uh, she's been, you know, we've got some problems. And she's been really nice about about that understanding about the situation and uh, but thank God and I've been here for quite a few years on this when I moved down here from from uh, Florida my ex-wife was living next door ground floor well where we are like this is a ground floor too except you know one bedroom and uh one bathroom and first I moved with my grandson up above right above her and uh, then eventually after several years or whatever I'd never seen a two-bedroom you know because I did it from Florida you know uh, and uh, this became available and then eventually my daughter who married a Swedish man and then eventually divorced him uh, but she came back to the United States and uh, she moved into an apartment behind us and uh, so her son my grandson you know he went to be with her so my ex-wife and eventually my ex-wife and my uh, my son uh, they moved into moved into here, and uh, oh, thank God because like I was upstairs, those stairs are I'm not sure I'm not an architect or a builder or I could say such and such kind of stairs, but you know the things are not enclosed. You know, there's no it's just you come out the door and uh, concrete, you know concrete you know with it and they're st kind of steep and they're really bad up there because this apartment that's one thing the apartment complex here well because they very rarely get they don't do any snow removal or ice removal at all which I find strange and so we're like where the sun shines or whatever we're in the back here and there's ice and snow you know out and there's ice and snow in other places here too but what happens here is it'll be melting, you know, it'll be all melted. Oh, by the way, thank God with my arthritis and if I, I would fall down those stairs or whatever, they had to going up to that other place. And, uh, but back here, this icy patch, it stays. 
it's re remarkable how long it stayed back because of the sun not hitting it. Um, so it's supposed to get to 36 today um, here. So it'll start melting a little bit. Now the street should probably melt pretty good because the cars are driving on it. And so the street, but I look out our patio door, I can see uh, the uh, street there, sort of notorious. Uh, uh, and I can see the cars are still, they're moving very, very few cars and they're moving very, very slowly. So hopefully, uh, now I'm, uh, I think my son, because he went out and he's going, out, I think he can make it up half a block and get us some Coke uh, and some other from a little tiny store up there that are really expensive, you know, it's up there. And now we have an order that has been delayed for a couple of days, you know, with a Walmart grocery order, I think $150 worth of groceries. And it was supposed to be delivered, you know, but, and the last word is that, uh, I don't think it's going to be delivered till tomorrow, I think, yeah, from Walmart food but uh, two right down at the end of the block you know the little store up there right down to the end of the block is a little the bank you saw me walk I made a video of me walking to the bank and back and uh, in that little there's a pizza hut and uh, some places like that so we could also you know order a pizza well we could order just coke but we could order a pizza and have them uh, send a couple, you know, bottles of Coca-Cola, hopefully Coca-Cola is zero. Um, here on the left you see uh, the, uh, I have two monitors here, whoops, let me show you, okay. You know, I have two monitors here. And it, of course, running Windows 11, and it's uh, a B link, but not the B link with the problem of audio. The, there's no problem with this on on anything. So uh, this here that you're seeing is, uh, you know, above you're seeing the right monitor, and the you know the left monitor, and. Uh, And let's go to where they, you know, where you, uh, that's the, the left monitor there. <clears throat> By the way, my ex-wife, you know, she's like in charge of the grocery shopping and all that kind of, I hate that kind of stuff. Uh, before Walmart and these stores started delivering, uh, she had to go to, you know, the grocery store. So there's a service because she's in a wheelchair. And uh, when my son was living, you know, over there, well, you know, I don't think they started delivering till over here. Anyway, okay, he would go with her. You know, the bus would come here and pick her up and pick him up. He would, they'd, she'd have to pay, you know, for whatever it is, I don't know, not much, three dollars, three fifty or something, and then if you have an attendant going with you, she'd have to pay for that too, or he could, you know, and then uh, they would go to the grocery store, and then of course they would tell the mitt service when to pick, you know, when to pick them up, and. Uh, Back, uh, I'm not sure exactly when, several years ago or whatever, when my son was in the hospital a number of times, once, for, at least once for three months. 
uh, I had to go with my ex-wife and push three carts, sometimes just two carts. You know, she was in a wheelchair and I had to do, you know, push two carts and sometimes three carts. Usually it was like, because we went numerous times during that three month period that we both had to go. And uh, and you know, then bringing it home, and of course, you know, getting it out of the uh, the bus, and then just putting it in the refrigerator, that type of stuff. Anyway, she takes care of all that, and now with the delivery, uh, my son and I just need to go to the you know they leave it at the door, Walmart. Wait a minute. Walmart, yeah. And they leave it at the door and we had to bring it, you know, in and she checks it off. And I, But it was a pain going with her those three months, well, all that time, but my son when he was, when he was in the hospital. Uh, because she is very, you know, specific about what she, you know, what she wants. So she's telling me, you know, and she doesn't uh, generally like it. She buys, you know, certain kind of burritos, you know, the name brand or whatever for price. What is it? Uh, whatever. And then, too, with her wheelchair, she would, you know, she's kind of a control freak. You know, like I'd be there with the wheelchairs are lined up and all that kind of stuff. And then she would need something, but then she would want to come over and say, you know, uh, no, these, you know, these or whatever. She had to be hands-on. And it's that same way here. If I'm helping, she can't reach the microwave. Well, sometimes she, well, she can't open them anyway. But it's like, uh, that, that one, no, that one, and, uh, you know, uh, please, you know. But she takes care of all the ordering and that type of stuff. And that's fine with me. Uh, and she makes sure she gets all the stuff she wants, but I'm easy to get along with, you know. And she makes sure I'm supplied with Coke. <laughs> I'm not sure she knows what would happen if I ran out of Coke. Uh, so, but recently, uh, we, we never, well, when I was in California during World War II, um, uh, you know, there were shortages. I didn't, I mean, I was, you know, out there until I was like four, four and a half or something like that. But there was uh, margarine had been, there. before that it was like butter. Of course, a lot of, a lot of Americans lived on farms and made their own, you know, butter and canned their stuff and put it in the storm shelter and all this kind of stuff. But uh, I can remember as a kid, and I brought this up many years ago on maybe before, well, I was doing video before YouTube and before all of them, but uh, maybe it was back when I was doing the WordPress uh, thing. I talked about the fact that I, that I remembered, you know, getting this looked like lard, you know, it was margarine had been invented and uh, it came and came with a little, the farmers got together and uh, said that, you know, it, they, the people couldn't, shouldn't be able to make that stuff look like butter, couldn't, couldn't be, you know, yellow or whatever. And so the people that manufacture it had to put out a little thing with a little packet in there and you could take a a pen or something or rather and poke it and turn it where it looked and I remember doing that and I did a search back several times because I, I mentioned it to somebody nobody knew anything about it and I thought that's strange and uh, and you don't see any movie you know of uh, 
some movie made back then where they're, of course they're all they'd be smoking and doing them wearing ties and the guys would be wearing hats. And, but I never saw a thing where they were showing somebody's kitchen where somebody was uh, coloring the margarine. And but uh, so finally, back fairly recently, I decided to search again because somebody I think I mentioned it again, you know, and somebody said, I never heard of that, you know. And then finally I found the information on it, you know, the what what farmers associations and uh, what the uh, 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 butter manufacturers, well I guess the cows are the manufacturers, but and so what the margarine people had to do to uh, so um, I don't remember ever having, not that we were poor, my dad was a union worker all his life, except for the short period of time before World War II when he worked for Man or a grocery, they, I think he delivered from a wagon with a horse pulled wagon, and uh, I think Manor was yeah, bread and other stuff like that to your door. And then there was also uh, ice that was delivered to your door from horse-drawn wagons, and then you know, of course, later trucks. And there was now that everybody I think had heard about. You'd put a sign up in your window, turned a certain way, and that meant you wanted a full block of ice, or you wanted half a block, or a quarter. And they would bring it in and put it in your refrigerator. Then, as a kid, my job it would you know. Oh, in the refrigerator, ice box. I still say ice box. And then you had a pan underneath it because it would melt. And then you'd, I'd have my, as a kid, my job was to empty the water out. But uh, how did I get on this subject? I do not know. But anyway, if we had we, if we had a flagpole on this house, I would turn it upside down. Not the flagpole, the flag. If you turn the American flag upside down, that's a sign of distress. Uh, Right-wing people, a lot of them are using, you know, not a lot of, well, a small number of them to protest and things like that. They'll turn the American flag upside down, like, you know, we have an emergency here, this is, you know, but most the right-wing people don't want to be flying the American flag upside down. Uh, the people in Texas and the South or whatever, they want to be flying the American flag along with the Confederate flag, <laughs> side by side, you know, uh, stuff like that. But The people in this apartment complex, too, are, are really nice. I mentioned this once, I, well, a couple times. I went out, you know, for the past elections and like when Obama ran. Before that, I forget what the, who, you know, was, but I went around and there was a few stickers on people's cars here. And, you know, for both sides or whatever. And I was surprised when Obama ran, I think I saw only a couple st Obama stickers, but there were no other stickers. And, uh, so, but you can't tell anything by, you know, me walking around the parking lot here. You know, that's not going to, uh, that doesn't tell us anything. Uh, okay, I'm going to upload this. This computer, Windows 11 and everything, is working good. And over here, there's that problem. I can put my Chrome box. Yeah, my Chrome box. I have a Chrome box. If some of you, if you have a Chrome box, I need to. Uh, well, I. I I, th I knew, I might, have, I might have it written down. I need to open up that Chrome box and upgrade memory and upgrade to a SSD drive. Or if, if there's one in there, I need to add another one or upgrade to a big one or whatever because that's the problem with the Chrome box. And uh, I also have a, uh, well, this is the Android. Uh, thing you get so cheap from Amazon, but then I have another uh, laptop. What kind is it? I forget. By the way, did I tell you I'm a river unto my people? That's from oh, what movie? 
Uh, I can't remember. But I've given a lot of cameras away and uh, computers, that kind of stuff. So if we have another blizzard, I expect you guys to put together some type of a sled, you know, with reindeers pulling it or uh, something, right? And bring rescue supplies to us. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, it's not bad. It just and my, like I said, my ex-wife she drives me crazy because she's talking to our daughter, who also lives in Texas about how bad it is or whatever. No, you know, this is not bad. Okay, these people can't drive on a little dusting of snow. Uh, although I know that's not true because a lot of people have moved. Texas is a popular place to uh, to come in the United States because it's warmer. And uh, because the governor too, you know, indicates that we're not taking orders from the federal government and we're not going to do this, and we're not putting restrictions in on, we're not having standards that the rest of the states have to meet, you know. Uh, he goes against that, you know, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to do that. And even has hinted in the past that, you know, that Texas will leave the union. It didn't go so well for the, uh, for Texas and for, uh, the other southern states when they left the Union. Although there's a whole bunch of, like me, I'm a liberal Democrat, and I'm not serious about this, but, you know, my God, I think if, I, I wouldn't mind Texas leaving at all and taking Alabama and Mississippi and a few other of those states, you know, with them. I think it was a mistake that we uh, didn't let the, uh, didn't let the South go. Of course, that would have been good for the for the black people, that's for sure. They'd still probably have it. Well, there's a whole bunch of Texans and everything that think, yeah, those, they wouldn't say slaves probably, you know. Well, those people, it was, you know, oh no, they weren't mistreated, you know, they weren't beat. Blah, 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 blah. I'm worried about the United States because so many people uh, just don't, can't comprehend. You know, they talk about the Bill of Rights and, uh, you know, the First Amendment and uh, Second Amendment and Second Amendment guns, you know. Oh, you know. Uh, but they really don't understand, you know, and there are two, a large number of people in the United States, a large number believe that the United States was created as a Christian, you know, nation. And they think that that's, you know, I know it's quite to the contrary. Our founding fathers, you know, they came from Europe. They knew how bad the Catholic Church was. They knew how bad the Anglican Church was. They knew how bad all of these religions were. And they wanted a nation here where everybody was free to practice their religion, whatever it is, free to practice it, but that the government wasn't controlled by it and that, that you know, that type of stuff. But, oh, so I'm really worried for the United States. But like I said, I'm going to be 82 here in March. I don't think I'm going to have to worry about it, you know, too much longer. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Oh, please, please. Click on, if there's a link below some to the stuff on Amazon, please click on it. You'll go there. And if you buy something, you'll make me a millionaire. I think you probably have to buy a 747 uh, aircraft and maybe a $80 million yacht and <laughs> those things before the... Uh, because this last month, I from Amazon, people clicking on Amazon links, I, I think I made $89, which I'm happy with that, except I hadn't made anything for, except less than $20 for 
six or seven months before that. Back a few years ago, I had uh, several months in a row where I made, you know, 80 bucks or something. And then zoom, you know, goes down to like zero, you know. So please use those links if you can. Why not? I know you all love me. Especially all the Republicans and uh, born-again Christians and Trump supporters. I know you love me. So use the links below.